The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today we're going to talk about no-tilling soybeans in the corn residue. What's the best way to manage that residue to mitigate yield loss in a no-till system? I'll ask today's guest to tackle that question. Let's check in with the University of Wisconsin-Madison soybean specialist, Sean Connolly, to get some answers. Hi, Sean. Hey, uh, thanks for joining me on the Soybean School. Hey, thanks, Bernard. I'm happy to be here. Hey, um, I want to talk about some of the no-till planting research conducted this year um, in Wisconsin. Yeah, but before we get there, um, you know, from your perspective, you know, how challenging has it become to manage corn residue in no-till systems? Yeah, Bernard, that's been a big challenge for farmers. And, you know, I started getting this question probably about five years ago now that, <clears throat> you know, we're just seeing such high corn yields and this, you know, the residue just hangs around. I mean, you could be in a corn soybean rotation and you could find corn residue from three years ago from that, not, the, not last year's corn, but three years ago with corn crop. So it's just a challenge to be able to go in and really make that system work and how to handle all that biomass and really trying to push these soybean yields has really been a challenge for a lot of Wisconsin farmers, but I think a lot of farmers in the northern part of the U.S. Mm. Hey, so let's Let's look at that research. Tell us about it. You know, how was it set up and then what are you trying to learn? Sure. So, Bern, about probably about four years ago, you know, we started getting this question. And so we did a bunch of stuff with some strip tail. And we showed, you know, when you go in, strip tail really helps solve that problem of going in. And that way we're not doing a lot of tillage, just basically a third of the land area is tilled. But as you probably know, Bern, it's really expensive to get into strip tilling. I mean, you buy that equipment, you need a bigger tractor. It's just a challenge. So we're like, all right, what else can we do to help, you know, overcome this yield challenge we've seen with no-till soybeans into residue? So we started looking at nitrogen treatments. And we've heard, you know, anecdotally people putting, you know, spraying nitrogen out in the fall to help try to hopefully break down some of that residue. Um, so what we really want to do is really kind of look at how can we handle that met residue and not go all the way back to heavy tillage because we, we want to keep that residue out on that on that you know on that field. Yeah. Now I'm putting up on the screen now the results from the first year and uh, your treatments across the board. And hey, let, let's dig into the results. You know, moving left or right, the first thing I notice is that you know straight no till really works better with a, a spring nitrogen application. Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised by that, and I don't know why, because, you know, if we look back in our books, we do have an old recommendation in A2809, that's our soil fertility handbook for the state of Wisconsin, showing a two-by-two two placement of up to 30 pounds of N in a, in, in a no-till situation. So, again, we have some historical data to, to really look at that. So, what I think we're seeing there is maybe with these heavy uh, residue situations, that some of that early season nitrogen is being tied up um, in that corn residue. So by applying a little bit of nitrogen, again, if you see on there, we didn't go any more than 30 pounds of N. Uh, the reason for that is because we don't want to mess up biological N fixation. So if you put too much nitrogen out there, what that does is it inhibits those, you know, the rhizobia from forming. Mm -hmm. So about 30 pounds is all you want to put out there. If you go above that, then you can really mess, mess that system up and, you know, Soybean is a big nitrogen pig, and we need the, those biological end fixers out there fixing that nitrogen. So, yeah, that's what we kind of saw out there is that that 30 pounds really helped us overcome that some of those early season challenges and that yield challenge we've seen in our no-till systems. Mm. Now, the data indicates that, you know, removing residue, you know, spring and fall actually reduces yield. Um, are you surprised by that? You know, what's happening there? Yeah, it's a good question, and we kind of – how about, I don't know, Bern, how about, how about that? You know, as a as a scientist, we have to really kind of say what we what the data supports and what we don't know. And, and again, I just want to also suggest, Bern, that this is only one year, mm. you know, still digging into this. I, I don't want to put too much weight on just one yeah. year data, but I think there's some interesting things that maybe farmers can at least try and, mm. and, and think about. So again, we don't go back to black dirt. I don't, right. I don't like to see black dirt on the landscape. It's not good for 
water quality. It's not good for carbon sequestration. So I, I'm really just trying to push farmers to maybe think outside the box and really trying to keep that residue on that mm. field. And and that's what year two of trial data is for as well, right? That's right. Now, Sean, you have some strong results, you know, when chopping residue in the spring and the fall. And, and you know, really, yields really do pop, you know, when you add spring nitrogen. Right. And, and I'm, again, I'm kind of I'm pleasantly surprised by, by, by those results because we really were trying to, again, get at what is the mechanism? Why are we seeing this yield <clears throat> decrease with these heavy residue systems? And, you know, initially, Bern, we thought it was soil temperature or soil moisture. And then we, when we look at the data, we don't see that as the driver. And um, another thing that we've done, we've gone in, we pulled some soil samples and some of the data I haven't really dug into yet is, you know, what, how much of that nitrogen is available within that soil profile. So we have some of that. We also pulled some soil samples where it looks at some microbial activity to see if there's <clears throat> some soil health factors that might be involved with, with what's going on out there. So again, this, that data slide that we just looked at there, that's kind of just the tip, tip the iceberg. And we're really trying to get at the mechanism. That's kind of the, the interesting, the sciencey part of this yeah. stuff. So Sean, what are your takeaways from year one of the research? Um, you, you know, you have some treatments there that are very competitive with conventional tillage. I think the first takeaway is I think we have options. We, you know, if farmers are challenged with their heavy residue and they think they're having a yield decrease, that they don't have to go out and get that iron out and turn that soil over. I think that's the first thing. You know, depending on a, a given year, I don't know what the price of nitrogen is going to be <clears throat> in Ontario or, for that matter, the United States next year. But if you kind of look at it, say it's 50 cents a pound, you're putting 30 pounds out there. You know, that just kind of gives us a sense of what what that cost is. And then and obviously a cost benefit is it does it make farmer money by adding that nitrogen in, in, into a soybean system. Because I know most of us don't like doing that. But again, if we can overcome some some yield plateau and if we can keep the steel out of the field, I think that's a good option that maybe farmers can, can consider and try it on their own farms this next year. Right. Hey, Sean, uh, always great stuff. Always great to have you on the uh, Soybean School. Um, this is year one of research. Um, will you come back and tell us about year two? Yeah, I'd be happy to, Bern. And hopefully I'll be able to get back over to Ontario sometime. I always like coming over and visiting with the farmers over there. So it's always always a good time. And I can always uh, harass Horse Bonner a little bit, too. That always makes my day. It sure does. I know he'd love to see you. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Bern. Have a good day.